Core progressions and relationships between harmonies can be understood in many ways and have been analyzed differently by numerous musicians and theorists. If you are used to theoretical analysis in regard to music, you are probably familiar with functional harmony. However, one of the more uncommon ways of understanding chord relations is through neo-Riemannian transformations. In this video we will talk about what they are, how they are used and if they can help us understand Jacob Collier's music. Right now you are looking at a tonnet, which literally means a net of tones, a tone net. This tonnet was created by Brian Heyer and is structured in triangles, which means this black space represents an E-flat major chord, because its corners consist of the notes E-flat, G and B-flat, which are the root, third and fifth of an E-flat major chord. The lines in this tonnet repeat three intervals. Horizontally the notes move in fifths, up into the right are major thirds and down into the right are minor thirds. In Neo-Romanian theory we'll use triadic movement in the tonnet to justify the relationship between chords not commonly related in functional harmony. Navigating the tonnets is done through transformations. If you've never heard this before, I recommend watching my other video on the primary transformations before you continue. The link is in the description. The first three transformations consist of two shared tones and one transformed tone. A shared tone stays during a transformation and a transformed tone moves during a transformation. Each transformation has a major and minor variant with reversed exchanges. The L transformation, also known as light tone vixel or leading tone exchange, moves the root in a major chord down a semitone to its leading tone, which means C major becomes E minor. L transformation from minor chords exchange the fifth with the sixth, which means E minor becomes C major. The P transformation, also known as the parallel transformation, uses the root and fifth as shared common tones and exchanges the triad to either its major or minor variant. This means C major becomes C minor and C minor becomes C major. The R transformation, the relative, moves the fifth of a major chord up a whole step, which means C major becomes A minor, or the root of a minor chord down a whole step, which means A minor becomes C major. And now things get much more interesting. The next transformations will have 1 to 0 shared notes and can be looked at as a transformational sequence consisting of multiple smaller transformations. The first transformation we'll look at is the H transformation, also known as the hexatonic transformation. This is borrowed from Richard Cohn's theory on harmonic cycles that navigate through semitonal movement six times until it returns home. These cycles are called hexatonic systems. This stuff is closely related to the Weizmann regions, which we'll look at later in this video. C major moves E to E flat to become C minor, which moves G to A flat to become A flat major, which moves C to B to become A flat minor, which moves E flat to E to become E major, which moves G sharp to G to become E minor, which finally moves B to C to return home to C major. All movement done in semitones. With our knowledge on Neo-Romanian transformations, we can understand this cycle as a process of PLPL or LPL transformations. Chords on opposite sides of the hexatonic systems are called hexatonic poles. The H transformation is therefore relating C major to A flat minor to each other through hexatonal polarity. The next one is the S transformation, also known as the slide transformation. The slide has one shared common tone with its destination which means the root and the fifth slide a semitone up from a major chord to become a minor chord, like C major becoming C sharp minor, and vice versa. The slide can be understood as a sequence of LPR transformations together in order. Next up is the N transformation, also known as the Nebenverwand transformation. When understanding this transformation, it helps to borrow terminology from functional harmony. See, the end transformation relates the tonic, let's say C major, to its minor subdominant, which would be F minor. These chords have one shared common note, and the transformation can be understood by applying R, L and P transformations successively. Carl Friedrich Weizmann is the theorist behind the transformation, and he explains it with a transformational sequence called the Weizmann cycle. As you can see, E major becomes A minor by applying N transformation. 
Then through R transformation, it becomes C major. By consistently swapping between N and R transformations, Weizmann returns home at the E major after six transformations. Last up is the D transformation, also known as the dominant transformation. It is introduced by David Lewin, who dislikes Riemann's transformational theory and its lack of a transformation between tonic and dominant, except by doing an L followed by an R transformation. He then combines the two as a transposition by the inverse of the dominant interval. The quote is from his works, Generalized Music, Intervals and Transformations, from 1987. Applying the D transformation to an A flat, as showed here, means performing an L transformation to the red spot, followed by an R transformation to the black spot contained in the E flat major space. With E flat major being the dominant of A flat major, we have succeeded in applying the D transformation. So how does Jacob Collier use this? Or rather, can it be applied to his music? If we start off with the simple LPR transformations, we'll see in Jacob Collier's cover of The Beach Boys in My Room, bar 47 and 48, that movement from G minor 7 to E minor 7 is a PR transformation, E minor to E major with a P transformation, and from E major to A flat major with an LP transformation. The rest of the transformations are shown on the picture, feel free to check them yourself. Let's quickly double check the PR transformation from G minor to E minor. P applied to G minor creates G major, and R applied to G major creates E minor. In the next example, from the same song, bar 31, we'll have to use some of the more spicy transformations. In order for us to move from E major 7 to C major 7, we have to apply both an N and an R transformation. Applying the N transformation creates an A minor chord, and applying the R to that gives us the C major 7. The next movement from C major 7 to G sharp 7 is the same interval we moved from E major to C major, which was a major third. Because of that, we're able to apply another NR transformation to create the G sharp 7 chord. So does this mean Jacob Collier uses these tools when composing? Though I can't say for certain, I highly doubt it. What these transformations do, however, is help us understand and allow chord progressions through geometrically structured spatiality. The next step from here is combining the transformations with jazz theory to better understand the dissonant intervals and alterations but that's a video for another day. Personally, I use these transformations when composing my own music. Feel free to check them out. Links are below. Thanks for watching.